Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Jewelry design has been using a lot of nature elements and incorporate into a design. Today, I would like to talk about this ginkgo leaf design and how to intertwine in between those forms with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. I was inspired by this Art Nouveau style um, of the leaf and um, really like to show you how I figure out for them to intertwine into the certain way. So that's starting from the scratch. So I'm going to come into the top view and decide how big this piece is going to be. Let me draw a circle right here. Um, we're going to use the circle command and snapping into the zero and you can be whatever size that you wanted to make. Since I'm not going to print this out, so I'm actually really not care about the size. Uh, just want to show you how to make this happen. And I'm kind of move this off center and we're going to do a uh, experiment. Uh, let's say we are going to have a three of component and it's going to snapping into the zero and we're going to use the polar array and snapping into the three. Then you want to record a history and see if you do like the structure of this. For me, it might be a little bit too close to each other. So since I recorded history, I'm going to come in out like this. So imagine that um, this will be the final structure. And then I'm also going to think about uh, something like that. I'm going to turn this into the red color. So we are going to have this red color and us wear the component to the other side. And then we're going to come in over here and we're going to snap in somewhere about here and coming down something like this as our first component. And we can always change it if it, it doesn't fit look like the right component for you. Okay, so that is the first. The second one I'm going to start in the same place and this one gonna come in over something like this. All right, so this will be where the leaf structure is going to be and they are gonna come into here. All right, so imagine that this is the part it's going to come into the point or not not exactly one point but coming to this point in continuous circle and hiding back to here all right so let's take a look on what uh is that mean there so first of all i'm going to uh making a shape and i like to use a rectangle conic corner and going to snapping right at the end point and let's go to the top view and we want to see like what is the size we want to hear roughly about one millimeter square and coming into the round point like this and i also wanted to draw a straight line right there so i can find a midpoint there and so let's use the move command we want to move from the midpoint to this end point right there the end point there and we also wanted to make it turn in this way so that that's this curve right here on the top view is 90 degree to the red one so it will sweep nicer all right that's also going to be the end point of this too so we simply wanted to turn on this and this and you're gonna see one of the point right there we are going to Let's look at the perspective. It might be easier for you to see. We're going to use the move command and moving from that point to this point. And again, the same thing with this point. I'm going to move from here to here. All right, so we all set on that one side. On the other side, it's you can be creative for whatever that you're going to, to present. So for example, we're going to use the arc tool that you got that one is for starting end and point. So we're gonna go in here and here, any size that's fine. And I'm going to moving up something like this. Gonna do it again, snapping to this end, moving up something like this. And if it is too big, we can always move in down with the control point. All right, and I wanna have that one to mirror to the other side. So let's mirror to this side with the midpoint. And simply we want go, We are going to draw a rectangle and snapping about right here. This is the thickness of it. All right, now let's go ahead to explode it, this one. We can delete this one. 
All we need to do is simply just join them. So once you join them, we do not want it to have really sharp point there. Uh, it might not look good on the render. So I want to use the fitted and we want to try about 0.2. We don't need to have something like huge, like 0.2 will be fine here and 0.2 there. All right, so now I have something like that and I'm going to repeat it. So let's say I'm going to have the pattern for five of them. So I'm going to repeat it by linear array and let's go to type it five here and we're gonna go from this point to this point. All right, so now this is our pattern, but we don't need everything in between. So we can simply just explode everything and we want to delete everything in the middle. And let's go ahead to just draw a straight line coming here to here. And we can join everybody back together. And I also like to round the bottom too to make it a little bit bigger rounded. I want to try 0.5 millimeter and you're going to go from here to here, here to here. Uh, you can make it puffier if you want to. For example, instead of um, having a straight line here, you might want it to, let me explode it, this one. We want to make it puffy. So the way that we can do is we can, having those two points, this point and this point, kind of move out in the angle a little bit and we can use the blend command. We want to blend in between here and here and then so we can get that little bit puffy. You can do the same thing on the other side, like this one. Let's turn on the control point, moving the very last two points out. So that has some direction for us to blend and we want to blend it in between here and also here. Okay, so then we'll have everything. Let's go ahead to join it. All right, now we need to, uh, what we need to do is moving this pattern that we design and fitting into this area right there. All right, and I might want to move this just coming out a little bit so it's not going to cut it inside of the circle. All right, we're going to use the command. Let me move this one out a little bit here. This is easier for you to see. All right, so let's use the commands called orient to point and we're gonna pick up this point right at the midpoint here and also the midpoint here. The target point, we, do not, we don't need a copy, so copy equal no, but we do want to scale and scale with 3D. We want to snapping into the end point here and also the end point here. And that's how we bring this into uh, this two section right there. All right, let's give it a try. We want to do is like sweep to rail. You're going to do the rail one, rail two, cross section one, cross section two. Before you click OK, make sure you record a history and we'll get something like that. Apparently something is wrong. Oh, I was using a sub D. Uh, let's do it one more time. Come into the surface, sweep two, rail one, rail two, cross section one, cross section two. And make sure that you want to align everything. So I want to align to the middle button. And this one aligned to the middle button and we want to make sure that they're facing the same direction. Uh, record a history before you click OK and we'll get something like that. Notice that the middle part is kind of bump up that I don't like it. So make sure you maintain the high is check. So then you will get something like this. Let's click OK. Now we'll have something like this. Take a look at the render view. All right. Double make sure if this is the pattern that you like. If you don't like it, you might need to go back to fix that pattern. Okay. Now we have this. Uh, we need to have them uh, flow into the circle. So in the perspective view that you can see, I have something in the red and it happened to have this curve that we use for sweep. We're going to use the same curve. Let's go ahead to use a sweep one rail and we're going to pick up this one and pick up this one and hit enter and then, then we will get this curve there. All right, so this is a circle there and you can see on my view, especially if we look at the render view, this is cutting into it. So this one actually need to go, this bump should go on top of this so it won't look like you will see the ring behind it. So the way that we are going to do, we're going to come back to the ghost view. I'm going to kind of manually to guessing where they are. 
And I also uh, one thing for the successful sweep and the surface is actually both of this you want them to be the same point. So sometimes I just like to rebuild the curve before I continue. So make sure both of them are a point. As you can see, this two point is more aligned now. So I wanted to move this one up a little bit, something like this. Okay, let's do one more time. We want to do the sweep to rail. You go from rail one, rail two, go from here and ending right there. Make sure you want to align them. And this one is going to move it to the bottom midpoint and changing the direction. All right, let's give it a try and see if it's working well. We are going to temporarily to group this guy. And let's coming into the top view. We want to use the polar array snapping into the zero, which is our center. We want three of them. And let's take a look. And don't forget to record a history. OK. All right. So now let's take a look on the uh, perspective. And we want to see the render view and see if this is talking really well. All right. So, so far, I'm seeing something that I like, like this one coming here and end it right there. Now, right at this point, it does connect to here, but I do want it to kind of go lower on this one. So we might need to change it at that point. So let's take a look on our ghost view. Now in our ghost view here, this is where the connection is going to be, where it's going to go lower. So I'm going to rebuild this guy. And instead of eight point, I want to do 12 point and see, am I going to get additional point close to that area and look like it is. So we're going to click OK. So I may want to pick up this one and have this go down a little bit. All right. And let's go ahead to delete this one. And we are going to do the sweep one more time. I'm going to sweep uh, rail one. And this is a rail. This is uh, the cross section is actually hiding over here. So I'm going to turn around. And we want to make sure we record a history and then we click OK. And then we'll get something like this. All right. So notice that this one now going down a little bit. So it's hiding behind that piece. But if you want it to go down a little bit more, you might want to, you can keep adding those control points to make this one lower as well. OK. And then uh, the rest of it, it looks like it's OK. But it's kind of uh, cutting into this circle over there, as you can see on everybody. So maybe overall this spot, they need to go a little bit lower. We actually don't know, don't need that spot. We can cut it off if we want to, right? So this is what the new curve that we have. We're going to delete those sample over here. And let's go ahead to pick up this one and this one. Let's temporary group it again. So we're going to use the polar array again. And the center is 0. And again, this 3 piece. And let's take a look. All right, so it's much better. This one is tucking in there and go underneath it from the next circle over there. And then we'll get this. All right, so if that worked for you, let's just go back one step. And we need to have this one to trim off this one right there. OK, so once you trim it off, uh, if you take a look on the ghost view, they are actually empty there. So to close it, we can simply just creating the surface by extruding this one. Uh, and we wanted to have this one going down. So that covered the entire area. And this time, we want to use this one to trim off the surface right there. And after that, just need to make sure join everybody. OK. I'm going to ungroup it and double make sure this one right here is a closed surface. This one right here is open. It's because we didn't close the, where the end is. So let's go ahead to use the cap command, C-A-P, and we can close it. Now it is solid, right? So you can bowling join uh, or you can keep it separated because you want two tone. Um, in the rendering. So let's hit this one and this one. And we want to use the polar array one more time. Set it to the center for the zero. We need three of them. And this is the final piece that we get. A lot of people send me email asking me about how to do this and how to do that. And at the end, I realized 
they already know the command, they just don't know how to link it together. In my Jury Cat Masterclass, I have a private group coaching program, which I take students' questions every week and make video for them to answer their questions. If you are interested about learning the Jury Cat design with me, you can check out my course on my website or sign on a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Let me help you to build your Jury Cat career. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next.